difficult bite to feel, um, and it, it required fish. It required really having very good line control, managing. I'm gonna pull away from that spot because there's other fish. I, I just it w it was not a place that I was able to to anchor up. I was out in current. Look at that big Susquehanna smallmouth. Um, I couldn't anchor up in that spot because I either you know had to dive right into that eddy and drop it right on top, which I didn't want to do because I didn't want to spook the fish, um, or I had to really control with the foot control steering on the motor and control um, my position. But even with doing that, I, you know, <laughs> I, I had slack in the line that there is a skill of raising and lowering your rod tip in order to to release line or to to pick up slack yeah beautiful fish 17 and a half incher but real thick we're gonna go back in there and catch some more and I'm gonna give you an idea of what it takes to really use your rod not just to fight the fish or to feel the bite but to control the line to keep that taut line when your boat is swinging back and forth it's uh you know it's a skill that you develop by you know controlling the boat in current and really well we're gonna jump back in and I'm gonna show you I'm gonna walk you through it once I get my stuff together and get back on that spot because I think there's more than one fish in that that little open water eddy uh, it's it's sort of an isolated singular you know ledge rock out there and there's a lot of swift current all the way around it let's move in there and I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about let's start by identifying our our target location so we got the the tip of this island here and we come up from it and it maybe tough to see that on you know on video but right in there there is a disturbance that there's an eddy behind it. So we're going to look at the slick water behind it. And as we approach, I'm, I'm controlling my feet such that I'm going to steer and I'm going to pull in sideways. And yeah, I got a little bit of a, a wind coming from, from this direction that's going to want to try and push me into it. So I'm going to stabilize, you know, with the foot control steering, with the, the Torquedo. And that fish, let's, let's look right in there. So you have that disturbance, and we come downstream, and foam bubbles right there. So that's where that fish hit. And I think there's, there's going to be another one in there. But... We have to get stopped here. We have to get stabilized in, in, you know, I can kind of look down and see rocks and such to know whether I'm sliding this way or that way or whatever, but I have to get stopped before I even think about making a cast. And I'm doing it with foot control steering in the motor. And then we're gonna do some things with the rod tip to make sure that that line stays taut as we're sliding downstream or, or the wind is pushing us towards it. All right, I'm back in the office um, getting ready to do an illustration for you. Usually I, I put these um, at the end, but I felt that this is sort of a hard thing to, to see and to understand what's going on. And I wanted to get the illustration first um, or, or somewhere in the middle so that you can really see what's going on here. You have to be purposeful and <clears throat> have the goal of, hey, I've, I've put a bait in there. In this case, it's a finesse jig uh, in a very specific spot. 
once I get it there, the goal is to leave it there. Not drag it along, not hop it, get it in one spot and dead stick it. Which when you don't anchor up or you don't wedge the kayak in a, in a grass bed and get yourself stopped. <clears throat> in other words, when you're free floating in, in current with the kayak, um, it, it's hard to do that. So let's do this illustration and then get back to the footage of that particular spot, which was um, was good to me. But it's hard. It's, it's not an easy skill to master. Um, dead sticking in a very tight, specific spot, mid-river, when you're not anchored up. All right, let's use this as the starting point. Um, I'm out in deeper water in my kayak and I have a nice um, straight line. I use the, use the straight edge here to help me make what is my goal is to keep the the line as taut as possible down to, to my little finesse jig there, right next to the spot where I think it's a calm water spot with foam sitting right there where there should be a smallmouth. And I was right, I think, three times in that particular position. Um, <clears throat> what's happening is I have wind hitting me this way and current actually pulling me back away from the spot. So two different forces working on, on my kayak and what I need to, to do is counter that to either either um, pick up slack as, as it moves me towards it and we're going to do that example first or to, to lower the rod tip in, in I don't want to say to provide slack but to not, to not be constantly dragging and moving that jig away from the really specific tight little pocket out in the middle um, you know that I've that I've identified hey that's where I want to dead stick that finesse jig so first example we'll do here is um, <clears throat> is is really the side view of having a wind uh, push you you know push you towards the spot uh, which is going to result in a bowed line let me continue with this illustration and show you what you need to do in terms of line management. What I've shown here, the wind is pushing me towards it, <clears throat> and I'm not doing anything with the reel. I'm not winding up slack with the, you know, with the reel. Uh, but if I didn't, if I didn't do anything, um, what would happen is I'd move in, and I would have this line sort of draped down like that, and that slack means you don't feel a bite. So what I, what I do in that case with the wind pushing me towards, um, and it's important to really focus on what does that feel like? What does that finesse jig feel like on that hard bottom? Maintaining that hard connection with the bottom, um, the way that I did it in this case is that you just slowly lift the rod tip. You're not lifting it so much that you're pulling it and dragging it. You want it right where it is underneath that, that little foam bubble trail right there um, you just slowly absorb what would be slack you don't want slack you just want to pick your rod tip up it sounds so basic it sounds like of course that's just physics Jeff but so few people do this well and they let it tumble they don't do an absolute dead stick um, and they they miss bites because wind pushes them towards the place that they are when they're they're fully free floating now that being said if you're in a position and you can drop an anchor you know off the back and maybe a one off the front and totally get stopped none of this happens but i was not in a position to do that so you know 
it just requires line maintenance, maintaining that, that line tension. I can look downstream in this swift current and fairly shallow water and tell that I'm sliding back. So I'm pushing forward a little bit with the, with the Torquedo throttle here. And let's make sure that my jig is in proper order before I launch it in there. You know, I, it's, it's a full cast away and I'm hanging back and the wind is sort of at my back. I didn't like that cast. The wind is kind of pushing me in, in this direction, right towards it, and I don't want that. So I'm steering to the left and I'm backing off on the throttle because I'm advancing too far upstream. And the wind is putting a little bit of a bow in the line, so I'm going to get this on bottom. I can feel that hard, rocky bottom. And I'm sliding to the left, away from the spot, but I'm lowering my rod tip because I want to keep that on the same spot that it's on. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm not moving the jig right now. I'm letting it sit in the same spot. But I'm lowering my rod tip so that as I move away from it, I'm not actually dragging it with me. So controlling your rod tip to pick up that slack, I think I'm too far back in the eddy, is, is one way to give that dead stick presentation even though you're out here sort of hovering. There, that was a good presentation. And I am moving around. The boat is swinging around in this current, in this wind. Yesterday I was on my buddy Mike's jet boat and he has spot lock on his bow mount trolling motor, which is, you know, was really cool in helping us. He didn't have to keep his foot on there. He could walk around. But even with the spot lock, there was some, you know, some of that boat swinging in the wind and in the current and it's a skill you need to, to master to keep your dead stick in place when you are not anchored up. If I have a chance to anchor up, I always will. I always will get completely stopped. But there are situations, and, and catching that fish there was one of them, where it's not an option. I don't feel like I could drop an anchor here and not just drag it along the rocky bottom right here next to these, you know, these fish I'm trying to catch and have them go, what, what is that? You know, it, it'll freak them out. So your rod tip goes down as you slide away and it comes up as you get near. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come near intentionally and Actually, I don't want to get that close, but but I'm picking up the slack as I'm moving towards it. You know, so it's a it's a it's line management. It is absorbing absorbing slack as you move towards it and dropping your rod tip to to give it length when you're moving away to avoid dragging it. You know, keeping it in place. You know, that rod tip just, it's a, it's a shock absorber for the dead stick presentation. Rod tip, up or down. And the key is you just feeling that, feeling that hard bottom and knowing that it's, it's sitting still. If it's sitting still, it's down there doing its job with that, that Elaztec, that Z-Man chunk trailer wavering in the, you know, the skirt material kind of wiggling around down there doing its part to look real all right second good fish out of there he is pulling drag i'm trying to steer him away yeah it's like i'm walking the dog come on get away from that eddie all right so it's it, it, doing this is not easy. It's not the ideal way to to dead stick when you're free floating. 
it is it takes time to learn how to do it in a way that it is it is effective and that you're not throwing slack into the line he swam right into it good job fishy the goal look at that beautiful fish I think that's my biggest one today I'm up to seven the goal is is really line management to pick up the slack yeah yeah nice 18 and a quarter incher pick up the we'll get him back in see you later guy pick up the slack when you're moving towards it by raising the rod tip higher as you're moving in and then as you're drifting away from current or wind or whatever you drop your rod tip and those actions um, are really dictated by what you feel going on at the end of the line knowing that that you know that that jig is locked onto the bottom in one spot not dragging but not out there doing who knows what because you have slack in the line you know hard connection to the bottom let it sit dead stick presentation you're hovering and you're you're shock absorbing with the rod tip you move in rod tip comes up the wind pushes you away the rod tip goes down that's it, it takes practice but allows you to catch fish where you just cannot anchor let's look at a top-down version of of something else that, that can happen in this situation, um, which is instead of being pushed towards it, you're being pulled downstream. And how you maintain that dead stick presentation uh, when you're fighting the current instead of the wind. So the first one kind of showed a, you know, cutaway side view of, of what's what's happening where the wind is pushing you towards the spot and you want to raise the, the rod tip to, you know, to maintain that, that line tension. This is sort of doing the opposite. We have the current that's pushing you back this way uh, instead of you know needing to raise it to to maintain the line tension you're actually lowering your rod tip um, as you're being pulled back you know pulled downstream to keep that finesse jig in the same spot in that little ledge rock eddy so first thing you want to do is use whatever tools you have to hold position um, and in this case I have the the Torquedo ultralight that has the foot control steering on it that I'm able to to have it at a, a setting that pushes against this this pretty strong downstream current um, but sometimes you know you, you get turned a little sideways and it's pulling you a little bit harder than you thought and that's where you make those small adjustments in in the rod tip angle from a high position to a low position to to basically <clears throat> you're kind of doing the opposite of this. So maybe you started with with your rod tip high like this, and as you get sucked downstream, you lower your rod tip like that. So it's just the reverse, you know, when you're of when you're being pushed towards it, you do the opposite and you lower the rod tip as you're being, you know, sucked away from it with the current. But for sure, use what tools you have to hold position. Uh, whether that's a motor or a paddle or a pedal drive or, or you know, anchor up if you can. But not every place is safe or smart or, or you know, sometimes you can't have a really good stealth approach dropping an anchor and you have to remain in this kind of free-floating position. 
use the tools you have to hold position. Um, and when, when those tools prove to be not enough to, to really keep that, you know, that hard connection without dragging it or tumbling it, you know, you, you want it to stay in that tight little spot, lower your rod tip instead of raising it, uh, just to, to keep that tension. Another thing that I will do, <clears throat> if it's, if say it was a really strong gust of wind that pushed me all of a sudden, is I will open the bale and let line out uh, if if lowering the rod tip isn't isn't enough to really keep it in the exact spot where I have it dead sticking. Back on the spot, it's critical to, before you cast, don't, don't just move it on a spot and make your cast right away because you're excited because you know I just pulled two good fish out of there. There's got to be some more. Wait a minute. Feel the current. Feel what the current is trying to do to you out here. There's a better little calm water pocket up here. You know, let your boat find it. You know, move up with the, the motor. The current, you know, just, just feel what's going on and get yourself relatively stable. Stabilize. Once you are stabilized, which I'm not yet, make your cast. Focus on the cast. Focus on what it feels like on the bottom. And then use your, your shock absorber. Wind pushes you in, rod tip up. Keep that line taut. Wind pushes you away, rod tip down, so as to not drag the bait. I think I'm fairly stable here. Other thing you know if you're not doing this well is that you can feel it tumbling if you're if you haven't dropped your rod tip as the current pulls you away or you know you're gonna feel that bait tumble along the bottom you can feel the you know you get a good sensitive rod I'm using the St. Croix Legend Extreme you can feel each little pebble and, and rock as it's, you know, that jig head is tumbling over it and know that, no, nope, I didn't do a good job lowering my rod tip, which is what I'm doing now. If, if you lower it too far, or, or not too far, if you need more than what you've got, you can open the bale, swing it up, get your rod tip up, and then restabilize with, you know, with more line out there. I'm going to wrap this up, but... I'm going to wrap it up with this. The, the, the presentations I made before were, were good ones. They caught fish. Um, in, in there are situations where you need to hover. But if you can, get into a position. Like I've, I've positioned underneath, you know, below the fish and dropped it into this grass bed. And it's a little bit out of range. I think I still might be able to cast up in there. Anchoring to make this dead stick presentation of a jig in cold water is always better. So that's where I'm at now. We'll see if I get close enough to where I need to be to catch it. If you got a hover, your rod is that line management shock absorber. If you don't have to hover, you're probably gonna catch more fish. Um, but you gotta practice this skill uh, when you're positioning in, you know, in open water without the anchor. Okay, last option. Not the best, but it worked. Jump in the eddy with the fish. I did a whole video just a second ago 
on stealth approaches and that made the difference you know I wasn't close enough back there on the grass bed to make the cast I needed to you know I would stopped hovering out and casting in but third good fish from from this spot and uh, you know stealth approaches is everything and I and I was able to feel the bite I was sitting at the back of the eddy and I cast it up to the top and got another yeah, 17 and a quarter inch or three really good fish out of one very small eddy and uh, line management using the rod as a shock absorber to maintain your dead stick and then this last one with the stealth approaches go watch the video on stealth approaches uh, it makes a huge difference and um, so does maintaining a taut line and dead stick and a bait in this uh, 37 degree water.